everybody. This is Kristen. It's been a while. I've been revamping, spending some time revamping my home business. I don't intend to go back in the classroom. Um, I'm trying to become a full-time artist and in the meantime I have a home reselling business as well. I find vintage and really nice condition clothing, shoes, accessories, etc. and sell them online as well. But I'm getting back to my art too, as I build my business in both directions. Um, anyway, so a, f a few years ago when I first started pouring, I did <clears throat> a flip cup technique with um, the intention of dragging the cup around to make a dragon, um, but it turned into a saxophone. And I liked it in my brain. And then I painted it and had this Art Deco saxophone. I might pop a picture up for you of what it looked like. And at my very first art festival, before I could even get prints made, I, uh, I sold it. A woman said, I don't even listen to that much music. I don't even play an instrument, but this is speaking to me and I love it. And she took it home with her. So um, I decided I'm going to do another original and try to get that effect. Watch, it's gonna turn into a dragon this time. But I am not good at flipping cups. So I may end up doing a traveling tree ring just to get the colors melded together. But then again, maybe I'll just try to do the flip cup and maybe it'll turn out similarly. I'm not good at those things. Um, I'm much better at swipes <laughs> than I am at flipping cups over but maybe we'll give it a shot. What I'm doing right now is getting my paint to a good consistency. I like it to be relatively thin when I'm dragging it along a thing. Um, and it's been sitting for a while, so it thickened up. Ooh, that's really thickened up. Um, they all have a little Floetrol, um, a little water, and the color, as well as my favorite and only silicone that I use, which is OGX Coconut Milk Hair Serum. You can get it at your local pharmacy, and it's also good for your hair. I have a bottle in my bathroom as well for my hair. Um, but the main ingredient is dimethicone, which is a safer sort of silicone for me. And for lots of people, I suppose. But I'm just getting my paint consistent. I usually put the silicone in after I've done all this because I don't like to stir the silicone in too much. It might make too much, too small cells, but hopefully it won't. We'll see. We'll blow it out if it, if it does. Right, right. So I can use a little water. This cup might be a little too small. Well, maybe not. When you do flip cup type stuff, it doesn't end up, you don't end up needing a lot of paint at all. But if this ends up being not quite enough to make the shape I want, which is going to be, you're going to be, I might turn this so you, in my editing so you'll view it right side up as I do it. But um, I'm going to have the saxophone bowl here. That's where I'm going to start with my cup and then I'm going to pull it down and up in kind of a stylized. That's the plan. We'll see if that happens, but that's the plan. But okay, now I've got all the colors and what I'm going to do, the colors I've chosen are based upon what's complementary to others. I want this to be very bright and cheery and nice. Can you still see the colors on the side? Yes, good. I want the colors to be very bright and cheery and light and um, complementary to one another. So blue and orange are complementary colors in color theory when you're watching color theory. Um, I have three different kinds of blue. I have this dark blue, which some people in the Carolinas would call Duke blue. 
It's metallic though, they're not metallic. And then I have a very light powder blue or baby blue, which some people in the Carolinas would call a Tar Heel blue. Um, I don't know anything about college sports. I didn't know that they were important until I moved here. Um, but anyway, and then I have a mid-tone, kind of a neon blue, and then a rust color, which is still in the orange family. It's a burnt sienna. And then this one is a gold, because I want some of that gold of a saxophone to come out, right? So we're using those particular colors. You know, now that I think of it, maybe I'll throw in one more, get a little copper in there. Or maybe I'll just, maybe I'll keep it to the side and put it through if I see it needs it when I'm done. That's a lot of colors already. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is pour in the cup the last paint I wanna come out of the cup, which will be up near the mouth of the saxophone. Just a little dab. Doesn't matter if you get little bits of paint on here, it can be painted out, though actually, does matter to me because my background I'm going to make white and I don't want to have to keep pulling color out of there. I'll be spattering it and doing all kinds of stuff too, but let's do this. Orange right up next to the blue. A different blue, a little neon action. And I'm going to skip the sienna for a minute. And do a little gold. Let's just put that here. I want gold in a couple layers, not just one layer. So we'll add a little of that at the end as well. See if we can get a tiny little bit more in there. A little blue. Another little orange. We're just going to fill this cup right up. I'm going to end with gold since that's a color I want to be seen in the saxophone. Now this is topped off, but it's just a tiny little cup, as you can see. And I'm gonna get this back. Now I've pre-mixed, and I keep pre-mixed usually, a big tub of white paint and Floetrol. It's a uh, Art Deco, I don't know, it's the flow paint, it's this stuff. I don't usually show what actual paints I'm using because I use whatever happens to be on my art table. But at this point, it's the flow acrylic paints that I have left. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my little spreader ready. I got some new palette spreaders, knife spreaders, so I can spread it pretty fast. But I'm not going to do this yet. First, I'm gonna do my flip cup this way because I know me. We'll just let it sit there for a minute while I get the white background spread around it. I find that this is much easier for me. I'm not fast enough to do the flip like I've seen other people do. And uh, like, um, I don't know why her name's gone out of my head. Christina Welch does great flip cups. Um, and some other people do. It seems like a lot of people are getting into doing a lot of resin these days and I'm I'm not going there. I don't I don't want to breathe resin. I know some of them don't have a scent. Just because they don't smell doesn't mean you're not breathing in toxins. And I had some lung issues in the past. They are over now. I do not have to see a pulmonologist anymore. But 
Now, see, I've gotten a lot of little messy swirls in here, but it's not going to matter because this is going to be for a, a bohemian jam. It's going to be for hippie culture. So we want it to be kind of hippy dippy and fun. So first thing I'm going to do, just release a tiny bit right here. Releasing. Come on, come out. Not too much. Just trying to do too much at a time. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's way too much up there. There was too much left in my cup. Let's close some of that back down this way. that back in a little bit while it's wet but I can paint over some stuff too now see that tiny little cup put a whole lot of paint on this painting so I'm going to definitely use my little palette knife my smaller palette to push it around a little bit and get it back to where I want it to be. There seems to be a lot of blue up here. I kind of like it to come down here a little bit. I'm gonna just scoop up some of this and bring it down. Notice how the cells are already opening up and showing us brighter colors. This is gonna be up here. It's gonna be the mouth of the sack, so I'm gonna be painting the mouthpiece onto there once this dries, so I don't need it to be all nice right now. I'm just trying to move some of that paint back down into the body of this thing. There's still a lot of it. I think I may. All right, now I'm gonna get my little um, tiniest blower in the world. You know, at first, I'm going to clean this because one should always clean as you go and I don't want chunks of hardened paint on something that's supposed to be nice and smooth. So, we're gonna wipe that down. Behind me, I have a shelf of um, my my tools behind me. I'm gonna cap the white again so I don't accidentally drip something in there. And then we're gonna get the little blower. Now this little blower can be found on Amazon or other places. It's called the tiniest leaf blower in the world, but I don't blow leaves with it. And it's a USB thing. So I got a battery, an old phone battery that charges a phone when you're traveling. And it doesn't work as well for my phones anymore and we got a better battery so I plug it into this rather than my laptop or tablet because I don't want to get paint all over my laptop. So I'll probably mute you. While I do this I'm just going to try to pull out some of the color that's muddied up in there a little bit.
Okay, I've blown it around a little bit, but I still want it to have a little more bright color over here. So I'm just going to drizzle a little of this and then I'll use the blower to blow it in. There's still way too much paint right there. I might just take a little of that off if I can. Let's see if I can pull some of that out. I mean, look at that. That's just a giant puddle. This isn't going to dry in time for me to Move it down here, and I can push the excess off the edge. <laughs> I don't want to lose all that beautiful blue, but this is just way too, too much paint. Let's throw a little copper brighten it up. That gold has kind of melted a little too much. More of that in there. I know it seems kind of weird to add paint when there's too much paint, but I really want some of those bright colors. Once it's dried, any any weird irregularities can always be taken care of by painting out the stuff I don't want and by um, painting in the stuff that I do. Like this bit right here, if I can't get rid of that, I, I can always paint it out later. Okay. Well, I don't want to mess around with it too much anymore because I do have the shape that I want and lots of great cells are popping up and happening. The paint is still a little too thick, which, which surprises me. I forgot to mention this is a 10 wide by 20 long canvas. I would have thought that this little bit of paint wouldn't have overwhelmed it, but obviously when you're doing some kind of flip cup with shapes, Learn my lesson, learn the lesson from me. You do not need that much paint. So I'm going to um, come around and give you a little bit of a close up. And then I'll pause you so you don't get dizzy. And then show you a little bit of the structure. And then I'll be back to do the embellishment when it's dry. Okay, lots of these colors look a little muddy, but they are a metallic -y brown and there will be a lot of gold and highlighty metallic painted when I paint the keys and the details in. But I really did get, I like these wispy edges. They're gonna probably, many of them stay. I like the splatter look. 
there's going to be more splatter at the end. But I do like that I got the shape I wanted for kind of a an artsy hippie fest sort of saxophone. So I'll see you when I get ready to embellish. Have a good one.